Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing this clever little M8 battery charger from Toolkit RC. I was in the market for a new small portable charger and spotted this M8 charger from Toolkit RC that was so cheap and had so many features that I couldn't ignore it. Now, Toolkit RC are a relatively new company, and if their website's anything to go by, they have big ambitions in the RC marketplace. And this M8 charger packs a lot of features into a very small box. The M8 box comes in black or white, and I went for white, so it's easy to find in the depths of my flight bag. It's pretty nicely made and put together, and feels quite solid. On the front is a mono backlit display with a combined jog wheel and select button. The supply input is an XT60 connector that takes 10 to 30 volts, so you'll need an external power source. I'll be using this large LiPo in the field, but you can just connect it to a bench power supply. And there's a couple of fans on the back to keep things cool as well. On this side is the ATS balanced output and the power output port. And on the other side, there's a 2 amp USB connector so you can charge your phone or tablet. And this also allows you to connect the M8 to your PC and upload new firmware. There's also a servo connector that I'll talk about later. It's one of the M8's little tricks. When you turn it on, you get these four main menus. And the display doesn't look as slick as an ISDT charger, for example and it looks a bit like an 8-bit console screen, but actually, I quite like it. Out of the box, the M8 only has one battery type available on the menu, which seems a bit weird. To add a new one, just scroll down to the next free one on the list, press the jog button to add it, and then press it again to choose the battery type. Just scroll through to the one that you want and select it. You can change all the settings, like the cell count, charge and discharge current, Press exit to get back to the main menu, and you've got up to five battery types in the list, which is plenty. To charge a battery, plug the balance lead in and connect the output port and select charge. The charge monitor will show you all the usual things like cell voltage, overall voltage, charge current and so on. And when it's finished, it'll tell you. But if you don't disconnect the battery, it will continue to trickle charge, which is quite a nice feature. Also, if you remove the charged battery and then plug in another one within two seconds, you don't need to go through the menus again. It'll just start charging. As well as charging, you can also choose to discharge or select storage charge. Now, don't get confused about the power rating this charger. It's rated at 300 watts and 15 amps. So the limit is actually whichever one of these is reached first, if you like. If you only have a 12 volt input voltage, there simply isn't enough overall power to give you 15 amps output. The only way that you'll get the full capacity out of this charger is to use a 30 volt power supply that can deliver 10 amps. Remember, you don't get energy for free, but realistically, you're going to be charging at lower voltages and currents in the field. The M8 can be used as a test tool. If you connect a servo lead from a PWM, PPM or SBUS device, you can see the channel outputs on the display, a bit like an oscilloscope. This is a great way to check out if you've got a dodgy receiver, for example. Just plug it in and it'll immediately tell you if you're getting a sensible signal out of it. The SBUS test covers all 16 channels, as well as showing failsafe settings and DG1 and DG2. You can also test your batteries. It'll test the voltage as well as the internal resistance. And there's more. You can connect this up to an ESC and a motor to test it, and it will show you the power being used. And this is great for testing in the field, for troubleshooting and debugging. Out 
As well as measuring PWM, PPM and SBUS signals, you can also use the M8 to generate them. So you can use this as a servo tester and to debug any faulty components. So to test a servo, just plug it into the M8 in the servo port, select PWM and then you've got a choice of manual or auto test. And this is great for just servo centering and checking that the servo actually works. You can use the PPM and SBUS to inject signals into your flight controller to check it's responding. SBUS is again all 16 channels and you can even inject a failsafe signal if you want. So, why would you want to do this? Well, let's say you've got a flight controller that isn't responding to signals from your receiver, SBUS or PPM. Is it the flight controller that's not working or is it the receiver that's screwed? Using the M8, it's easy to troubleshoot and fathom out what's wrong. And another great trick the M8 has up its sleeve is it can behave as a bench power supply. And I can't understand why anyone else hasn't thought of this. You can dial in any output voltage and current and then plug whatever you need into the power output port. So in theory, you could power up your quad from this and limit the current so it doesn't burst into flames when you power it up and there's a problem. A bit like a smoke stopper. I had to play with this and although it does shut down when it reaches the current limit that you've set, it's not very accurate and it's a bit slow. Again, be aware that you can't get more power out of this than you put in. If you've only got a 16 volt input supply with a few amps, you can't get any more volts or current out. And as well as the custom setting, there's also a few preset values for charging, Mavic, Phantom and Inspire batteries. And here's where you may easily get confused with power in versus power out. If you select Inspire, for example, which is 6S at 4 amps, and you've only plugged in a 4S 16 volt LiPo as your input, you'll never get the 26 odd volts out and your Inspire battery just won't charge. In the system setting menu, you get the usual range of tweaks and adjustments. You can change the input voltage and current limits, the maximum safe charge time, and the display backlight and contrast values and so on. One really interesting option is the discharge mode. You can set this to internal or recycle. It defaults to internal, which means the battery will discharge through some load in the charger, probably a resistor. And the dual fans will power up and the battery will discharge to whatever the setting is for the battery type you've got selected. This is fine when you're using a bench power supply to power the M8, but what if you're powering with an external battery? Why waste all that energy? If you set the discharge mode to recycle, the M8 will dump the power back into the external battery. It's a pretty neat trick, but don't use it if you're on a bench power supply. One problem with all chargers is how accurate they are. It may say the battery voltage is 4.35 volts, for example, but is it telling you lies? Well. The M8 has a sort of hidden menu that allows you to manually calibrate the voltages. Just press and hold the jog button and power the M8 on. And you'll get to this manual calibration voltage display that allows you to tweak the voltages. Just connect an accurate voltmeter to your battery and measure the voltage and then go to the corresponding pin on the balance connector and tweak the voltage output until it's the same. Do this for all the outputs and hit save and you're all calibrated. Updating firmware is really easy and since I've had my M8 there's been a couple of updates. I haven't seen any significant issues yet but ToolRC are obviously keeping on top of things. To update the firmware go to the toolkitrc.com support page and download the latest firmware and unzip it.
Just connect the M8 to your PC with the supplied USB lead and it will appear as an external drive. Drag the new upgrade file onto the drive and that's it, upgrade done, simple. This works great on a PC, but weirdly I found the M8 isn't recognized on a Mac. It just doesn't see it as an external drive. And usually Macs are much better at handling external USB devices, but not in this case. I tried a couple of other USB cables and it's the same, so clearly there's some issue. It's not serious and I'm sure that it'll get sorted by Toolkit RC eventually. I've been using this for a few weeks now and it's been fantastic. I've used it a few times on the bench, but mainly I bought it as a field charger. But as a bench test tool, it really comes into its own. It's like the Swiss army knife of chargers. Having one small easy to use box that's a charger, testing tool and portable bench power supply and can be just thrown in your flight bag is incredible. And it's cheap. Banggood have got these on offer at the moment for just £32 or around $40. An ATES charger for £32 is ridiculous. And you get all these other features as well. The equivalent ISDT Q6 is more expensive at around £40 and is only 6S and doesn't have anywhere near these number of features. Are there any cons? Well, the Mac connectivity thing is a minor irritation and if I'm honest, the jog wheel is a bit too sensitive. It's easy to press the jog button and find that you've moved the wheel onto the next option rather than select the current one. But I'm getting used to it, so it's not too much of an issue. The only things I'd really like to see is the M8 powering up direct from a balance lead. That way you can use it as a quick battery checker rather than having to use one of these, which we've all got loads of. And maybe the power supply option current limit setting could respond a bit faster and a bit more accurately. And that way you could use it as a real smoke stopper when you're powering up your quads for the first time. This is a new company and a new product, so I've no idea how well this will stand up to constant use, but I'll keep you posted. And it's going to be interesting to see what other products Toolkit RC produce. Thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first time to the channel, subscribe for updates. I'll see you next time.